Um, in today's video, we're going to be making a copper necklace, only it's going to be done just a little bit different from what you're used to. So, I'm going to need, you can use painter's tape or ring mandrel to do this. I'm going to be using a round cabochon. Um, I've not chosen which uh, color yet, but I think I'm either going to go with um, moss agate or labradorite. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm straightening out some half round wire. It's a copper half round. And I have my square wire right here. So I'm only going to need like three inch pieces of this copper wire here. So I'm going to need four three inch pieces right now and we're going to need some more uh, on into our project. Okay. We're also going to need uh, 30, 30 gauge um, round wire or you can use um, 20, uh, let's see here, 28 gauge. I've used 28 gauge before. Um, that's over here. So, I have that. And then now I'm going to get my, my, uh, square copper wires. So these are, these are, um, I guess about six inches, seven inches of wire. I'd rather have uh, too much than not enough. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get my old trusty ruler here and measure out the center of this piece. I guess it's just a little bit over six inches because I use a six inch ruler myself. You can use scribing calipers to do this or you can use a marker. Um, you know, if you use a marker, you always run the risk of it being seen through your weave. Um, especially if it's permanent but if you use a paint marker that um, that can be uh, you can use a paint marker and that could be wiped off mine sometimes wipes off while I'm making it so I'm going to use my scribing calipers just to measure out about how wide I'm going to need my pattern to be And then I'm going to mark on each side of this. You don't have to use three inch pieces. I am just so that I have something to grab a hold of. So I'm just opening up my ring mandrel here. And I'm going to, um, first I'm going to get my half round here together. Make sure my round is up and the half is down or vice versa, it could look good either way. Um, but personally, I like the ha uh, half round to be up instead of the flat side. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to line these up, make sure they're all straight and even with each other. And then I'm just gonna put a gentle uh, bend right here 
just so I can get it onto my wire without it moving around too much. So I'm going to line my middle of my my um, wire back up here. And then I'm going to place these. See, here's where I scribed my line at. So that's how I know where I need to begin at. I need to put these this right up near that scribing line. And then I'm gonna take my I'm going to take my 30 gauge wire and wrap it around about three times because we don't want too much bulk um, on this part. But it's okay if if you need more than three wraps to secure your half round onto your square. Oops, I've moved my camera. So I'm just going to uh, put these into my ring mandrel real quick. Okay. Oof. Now... My scribing line is here, so I'm going to need to move this up just a tiny bit. There. And then I'm going to place these back into my ring mandrel. So I'm going to use my awl and I'm going to be using, oops, my uh, tweezer nose. So I'm just going to do this with my tweezer nose to make sure everything is nice and flat there. And then I'm going to pull up my first wire, wrap one two times, pull up my second wire, my second half round, I'm working with the half round right now, wrap one, two times, and then I'm going to pull up the third half round, wrap one, hey, yes, Two, two times. Okay, I'm gonna take my last one, my last half round. Bring it up with the rest of them. Wrap one, two, three times and then I'll bring down this fourth fourth half round wrap one oops one one Two. Bring down the second half round. So that it's just under that first one. 
or the fourth one. Technically, it's the fourth one, but. Okay, so one, two. Now bring down your third half round. Forward.
do one more uh, triangle and then we're going to move on with our design or pattern one two one two One, two, almost to our line. Three. Okay. Now I'm going to cut my weaving wire as close to the side, the edge as I can, and then I'm gonna do the same to this side. to take my my all and bend these wires up and then I'm gonna trim them bend them in toward this triangle here and now I'm going to clamp them just pinch them down give them a nice squeeze that's going to keep your weaving wire from moving any it's a bit different than we're used to I know but it's beautiful so I'm going to do the same to this side I want to make sure that they are all lined up with each other. And then I'm going to trim them. And I'm going to bend them all forward. All together first. And then forward. 
toward this triangle here. And then I'm going to clamp them all down. Now our our thing our frame is held in place. Sissy, be careful, please. Sissy, look. Okay, so I have my couch on here. It's round. Um, let's see here if we can measure how big it is. Mommy. It is 20, 20 20.9 millimeters. So almost 21 millimeters, I, I suppose. Okay, so I've found a domed cabochon that's purple labrite that I'd really like to use. So I think that's what I'm going to use. Um, we're going to make some adjustments. Uh, here. So our cabochon is going to end up in the very middle of this. So I'm going to take these uh, square, square flat pliers and measure. First, I have to measure in between the middle here. I have to make sure that we get in the exact uh, middle of our weave here, which will be the tip of this. So, first I'm going to go down through here and make sure all of my triangles are nice and snug. Um, I'm going to use, uh, oh, where's my, my nylon jaws? Here they are. So, I'm going to use nylon jaws just to make sure that they're all nice and flat and lined up with each other. Like here, I have a little uh, tail poking out that I need off. Okay, so everything's nice and snug. So I'm going to go directly on this side and hold with my pliers and bend with my fingers. Okay, so now we have a, um, a V in our design now. I'm going to adjust these. They are holding all of our wires where they need to be and they're just not tight enough. So I'm going to retighten these. I want this design to go up either side of this cabochon. So now that I'm at this point, I'm going to continue my bend around my cabochon on either side. I'm going to leave this up here for now. Now, the back wires are going to need to be bent in just a little bit more than your top Mommy. wires. Okay. So let's continue our bend with the back wire here. So it needs to be, they both need to be bent in a little more than the rest. Okay. So you'll end up with a shape like this for now. Now, the front wires So I'm just holding these and giving them a gentle bend Not a major bend, just gentle
adjust until you're satisfied with the way that this bends around your your gemstone, whichever you may choose, whichever one you may choose. So the V to be about like that with mine. So I'm going to go back here and I need a piece of half round. So I'm going to get just a few inches of half round wire off my spool here. These wires are laying on top of each other. So. Just going to bend these down like this. And we'll leave these here for now. These two we need to bend down. Just slightly, no major bends that we can't straighten out if we need to which we're not going to need to, but just in case. Okay, now I want just a small amount of room up here. So it would be right, right about right there. Just so it hugs my gemstone just just the right amount. So I'm gonna get my square pliers. And just hold right here. Make sure that it's even. And then I'm gonna bend it up. I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm holding with my finger in between these wires. And I just want it to be flat. Are straight I mean right here okay just so these wires can lay beside each other like this and the same on this side just so they all cross each other or they're crossing each other here 
right? Or just laying on top of each other. And then they're beside each other here, right? So I'm going to put a piece of half round right here just, just to keep everything in place where I need it for the time being. So I'm going to use a piece of my uh, scrap wire from earlier and put just a, a tight, you need it to be tight because it's trying to pull apart. It will be trying to pull itself apart. Just need a couple wraps here. Now, after I get these on, I'm just going to move them down to here and then continue to put, wrap them around until the ends are gone. This is about two inches of half round right now. I don't want very much. Uh, room to be taken up there with this so I'm not putting a very big piece on so I'm gonna do the same with this piece hey, mommy. Hey, mommy. okay so I have cinched these down with my pliers here I need to make sure that they are as close together as I can make them and as close down to the frame as we can make them okay now I have four pieces of half round I'm going to go through and straighten these and make sure that my half is up my half is up and the flats down or you could do flat up, half down, it's up to you. These are about three inch pieces because we don't need very much. I'm just going to bend them right here so I can get them onto the frame. I need to go up this with my nylon jaws real quick though. I'm going to take my half round here and place them as close to this first mark here that we can. And I'm going to take my weaving wire and wrap it around three times. going to hold the half round bend this up just a, just a little and now I'm going to remove this half round that's down here so I can scoop my weave down
just gently remove your Avron that we put here to anchor it. Okay. And now I'm going to scoot my round down and bend the half round back down just a little so I can be able, so I can uh, bring my weave in. I'm going to make a few adjustments and begin waving. Oops. Oh gosh. I need to make some adjustments to my light and my camera real quick.
I'm just going to put enough patterns around these four wires to get around my bail making pliers. So I'll probably go to about here.
Oops. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna run my nylon jaws across this. Just to make sure all these guys are nice and even. Okay. So I'm going to bend these up. Make sure they're even. And then I'm going to trim and then bend them up onto each other.
Okay, so I'm going to get my pendant um, finished up on this side. I just want to make sure that my half round is straight all the way down. And I'm going to continue to wrap this around until I get just a little bit closer. Now I'm bringing my half round around both of these wires. Okay, so the whole point of wrapping the half round around this one all the way across and the entire the same piece of half round is to get to this side. Now, when I get here, I want my half round to go around the frame. And my wires here, only, only just like a couple times, maybe three wraps. Don't have to do that, but I do prefer to.
just a couple times. So it's going to be going over the frame and these two wires here. And then I will begin wrapping what's left of my half round around uh, this wire right here that's coming out of uh, right here this loop so I'm going to begin that now the first few uh, stitches will be the hardest But once you get the first couple of, of rounds in there, you should be fine. I'll just lift this wire up just a little. And continue your, your wrap on down. Do here. When we get to the other side, we are going to add the stone in, and then it's going to be done. So when you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And then um, this side is going to be just a, a tiny bit different. Grab me a piece of half round here. And I'm going to start the weave on this side or the wrap, whatever you would call it. Only this side's not going to be as uh, as long as that side. Okay. So I'm going to push this up in here. I'm going to put my stone in.
And we need this to go under both of these wires. I'm just going to continue doing this until I reach this side. Got through to the other side, and now I'm going to trim my half round, and then just push it up under here. Oops. Now we're going to lock our stone in place. So this one, I'm just gonna bring around into like a like a little curl here, and then this one is gonna come up. work with the back first <clears throat> so I have to bring these in onto each other and bring them around and then back down and then this one, you can do whatever you like with it. You know, you can leave it there or or make it into like a little decoration type thing. You can chop them off or whatever. But I, I think I would like, I want to chop them off and then just put a small little curl right here. And then I need... So we've got that, that guy there, and then this one, I'm probably just going to cut it off and let it, I want it to come up like this. And then I'm going to trim here. And then this one, it's going to go right down in there. I'll show you in just a second. Okay. So it goes right, right down into its own frame here.
Right there. You could do that to all of them if you like. Totally up to you. So I need just a space right here where this one is. If you cinch these tight around your stone, it's not going to um, budge. And then this one, I just want it to be a small curl. Or you could run it on around, you know, and do whatever you like with it. This guy, you can put it right down in here if you want. Or you could do it like this. So I try to do as many demonstrations as I could with this design. I'm just trying to put just a small space right here. And these, you can trim them. Add it at an angle. All right. Push your bail in. And bring it on around your frame. I need that angle. Okay, I'm just attaching this right now. I'm just attaching the bail here, and then this pendant is complete. And then you can leave leave this bare, or you could do LOS. I like to do LOS, but that's just my preference. You may not like to. You don't have to, you know. Just give that a gentle squeeze there. So if you if you squeeze it too hard, it's gonna cause your wires to uh, bend on top of each other. These these wires, your frame wires. Anyways, so I will do LOS and I will take a picture for our uh, for our cover photo. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, have a really great uh, day. Thank you for watching.
Okay, I'm, I'm done for the time being, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you take your okay, I will. Mm. She was much less Look. really greedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. You did really good. Just like I did good on the clubhouse. People who's watching. How come look okay, honey? Let's get Dan's bottle in the first. It's 8 30. Alright. Can you leave that in there? With the clubhouse baby? Hmm? Leave the thingy in there with the clubhouse. What thingy? Where I said you left the clubhouse. I didn't. It's off, baby. Oh. I'm sorry. I do need some LOS, babe. Oh. And then, so I, I'll do. I'll put this. Will you go get me about like? Hang on. This much water in the bottom of the cup. Hot, hot water. Like, like this much. See? Just a little bit. <coughs> This is the first of its kind. Like, literally. The first of its kind. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna make your wall for the vent part, don't you? You put it in right there, you don't even open because it's so hot. That's your air conditioner. Yeah, unless it's in the winter. Then I'll put up a wall. I mean, a blanket. Then I'll put. Well, blankets will freeze when they get wet. That means no wind can get. Did you already take your sleep bag? Huh? No. Did you pop up? No. Do you, do you feel like getting that video together or no? Okay. I call it a fish pause. Is there. it really hot water? If it's there. Oh, yeah. Just try to get her bottle in so you can go to the shower. I need the pokey. I, I still have these two. I put water there for Sam because he was wanting some water. Oh no, he was chewing on this. He was chewing on a bone. Sam was. Pink stuff. Say, at least you have pink stuff, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I think it's like four videos. <laughs> it, it took me all evening. I done a prom tutorial, but I don't want to do that one just yet because I'm still working on it. But this one, let's see here. 